Welcome to another edition of the Calgary Sessions. This is episode number five. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. Today, sitting across from me is a longtime friend. Um, we kind of go back to the er mid 90s, so 25 ish years ago. Um, so I will let him introduce himself, tell us uh, where he's working, and what he's up to these days, and then we'll get into the show. Thanks, Jeff, uh, for having me on. This is this is great, exciting. Uh, Mike McLeod is my name. And uh, yeah, born and raised in Calgary here. Right now I am currently uh, on the last leg of opening a brewery in town, local brewery uh, named Tailgunner Brewing Company. Really excited about that. And uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I was just telling, telling you I was digging a trench right before I came here. Glamorous. For, yeah, so we do it all. I was playing in the dirt right before I came here, so. Cool. I'll be, he'll be doing it right after. <laughs> um, so me and Michael back to our hockey days. Um, Michael was playing for the Buffs. I was playing for the Royals, and we kind of grew up playing against each other. Probably didn't know each other growing up. He's a year older. You know, he would we would play against each other every second year. Right? Yep. I'm guessing. Him and I kind of played the same way. Um, fairly aggressive. You know, not overly talented. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so so the the story I have, and you know, the cool thing about this show is every guest that I'm bringing on right now, there's a connection to it. So the story when I was thinking about talking to you, we go. This goes back to that trip in Drummondville. So great. And so we're like 16, 17, um, and for whatever reason, the Royals and the Buffs get invited to this kind of big tournament in Drummondville, Quebec, and. And the craziest part of all this was so crosstown rivals, you know, a lot of testosterone at that age. Like we were pretty competitive dudes. Yeah, hate was a strong word. Yes, it was dead the hate. App, the, the the right word. Yeah. Yeah. So so we get to Drummondville, um, and the accommodations we get we get bust out to this. It's like a wartime bunker. It's the weirdest thing. We ride out there. The teams were separated, but our team rolls out in a in a yellow school bus. We get to this place, and it it almost it looks like a Russian camp from a movie. Yeah, and and so we, there's our team. We go down these stairs <laughs> into this like literally we go downstairs into this basement, wide open basement with these like six foot dividers down the middle, and there's there's these little cots, and on one side is the Royals, and then there's these foam barriers yep. on the other side <laughs> is the buffs and it is the craziest i was so confused half scared yeah because you don't know what's going to happen oh, at night because yeah. <laughs> this is so and, and the one thing i remember is and i don't know what happened i don't know if it was early on in the, in the tournament or halfway through but you did something and i can't remember if you like the middle of the night you like got up and started screaming and yelling and like climbing <laughs> over the top but I need was, you. I need you to chime in for this. Yeah. One. So there was obviously some back and forth stuff going on, <laughs> since we were all literally in the same room. Yeah, forty of us or something like that, yep. and uh, you could just feel it. Someone had to start something. So, what the hell? <laughs> I I did, and I think I think Caleb Toth jumped in with me too. Oh right. And. Uh, anyway, so we decided. Well, let's let's do a little pillow fight. You know, that's. Right. That's okay. The only problem was we, you know, we're putting shoes and stuff in our <laughs> pillowcases and, you know, making sure there was a little bit, a little bit of an oomph and uh, maybe some other stuff too. I don't know, whatever we could find. And so we went over and yeah, it was, uh, it got a little out of control. It was, it felt like chaos. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who it was. I think your cat, Philip Chuck, was that his yep, name? Yeah, Greg Philip Chuck. He was a nice guy. He, he really worked hard to calm things down because, yeah, I, I can't remember who I hit, but they were like, that's, what do you have in your pillowcase? And, you know, I'm like, here, Jen. I got everything. Yeah, maybe maybe you can figure it out if I hit you again. And, and I don't know. It got crazy. Me and Caleb were having a blast doing it. And, uh, yeah, it just, it did. It escalated. But luckily, you know, Philip Chuck was there and, calmed us all down but it, it's so funny and that, that memory you know there's a lot of memories growing up but that one stuck out soon, <laughs> as soon as i knew you and i were talking my head went right there <laughs> which is super random so um yeah mike and i obviously grew up we were both born and raised here and you know after hockey we just uh went our, you just you didn't see him for a while and then we started seeing each other in the clubs again you know Did the you original mercury, mercury on the 17th that was kind of a God, regular that was haunt. A great place and 
so it's funny you know a, a couple of shows earlier i talked about just connecting with hockey dudes you know sometimes you you connect with somebody and you're just your friends for life doesn't matter how often you see the person you're just totally you're connected so yeah. this is why you're on the show oh, so thanks man um so yeah let's get into uh, your story you know go back as far as you want to go whether it's um you know kind of how you grew up or where you grew up and then yeah, just how you started making moves to doing your own thing. You know, you own two businesses right now and yeah, just kind of sure. we'll weave in and out to get you through this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, like you said, born and raised here in Calgary. Actually, my um, I guess second generation, my, my mom was born and raised here too. So um, yeah, I uh, from as early as I can remember, I was living in Mindapur and Sundance. We moved over to Sundance there, so I'm a South boy. And uh hence the buffs, but uh, <laughs> pretty neat story that we can kind of come back to in a bit. But I've actually known Kale, who's Kale Tucker, my business partner. Um, we went to school in grade one together, awesome. like just crazy. So, you know, dear friend who ended up, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work together and uh, kind of been with each other our whole lives. It's crazy. Yep. Um, but, you know, it's it's a bigger town now, but it has those small town. It does, roots, doesn't it? You know, it's it's pretty neat. So. Um, I have a lot of friends actually that, that date back, you know, to those elementary school days and stuff still that, you know, haven't left either. So I think that says something about the city, but also maybe says something about us too. Totally. I don't know yeah. if that's positive or negative, but I think yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. So growing up, growing up down South, um, playing hockey as you know, and, uh, being that that was probably the last year of decent hockey for yeah, me, I did, me did a couple of years in, <laughs> in junior bush league stuff that was you know up in Grand Prairie and stuff like that. So I, I don't even want to talk about that. But but uh, you know I, I jumped into the construction industry. Um, you know if it wasn't oil, it was definitely construction. Next here in town, we every boom that happened. You know a, a guy like me who you know didn't pursue uh school you didn't like so no, you went so I, I did high school yeah. and then uh the only stuff i did after was just sate um as it relates to construction like did you get your ticket at sate or what'd you do yeah um almost funny story i was in my fourth year <laughs> and uh they brought me in the dean brought me in his office and he said um so you've been apprenticing under stonebridge and i'm like yeah and he's like, so who owns Stonebridge? I'm like, well, I mean, I, I do. <laughs> and he's like, how do you, what? And, and I'm like, come on, man. I'm in my fourth year. Let's go. He's like, you can't apprentice under yourself. Uh -huh. And he's like, you need to, and well, I'm like, what do we do here? He goes, you need to, you know, go work for someone else and apprentice under. I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> bye bye. I'm working. So I, so I took off. And I'm like, I've been hiring people out of state. Like, and how do you want to lose that too? And he's like, sorry, we can't do this. So anyway, I, that was, that, that's as close as I got. I got into my fourth year, I'd say about a quarter way or halfway through it. And they, somebody saw the signatures matched and that wow. was that. So, so you're out. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So how did, so the construction world and, and this well, another random story, but I remember you were, well, you, you had started the, the company mm -hmm. and I, and you were building this uh, side by side. It was like early, early days, the side by side and over off of 14th. I can't remember what. Yeah. What neighbor was that? Yeah. Uh, actually, the neighborhood's called South Calgary, if you can believe it. So was that your first project? Yeah, that was my first Stonebridge uh, build. So I built a fourplex there. Yeah. It was four. Yeah. yeah. So it was massive. And I, yeah. you know, I grew up in the construction world. My dad framed houses for years. So yeah. when I found out that you were doing that, I went over to the check this thing out because to, to hear somebody building a fourplex back then, yeah. I don't know what it year 2000. it was. 2000. So One. early. 2001, 2000, yeah, something like that. It was early. So yeah, so to, to see the, the size of project you're working yeah. on, I, I still remember this, the side street it's on and everything. So how did, why did you go construction? Like, was it family, was it like? You know, yeah, great question. Uh, my grandfather actually, whom I named the brewery after, um, he was in construction. So I, I, he was a carpenter. I followed kind of in his footsteps. I, I used to, um, I mean, every weekend for, I don't know how many years uh, I'd be out. My parents had dropped me and my brother off out at their uh, hobby farm in Bear's Paw. And so I spent tons of time with them, um, him and my grandma, and they were just hard workers and uh, they didn't need to be doing that stuff, but that they, they're Saskatchewan farmers. Yeah. They just they have to be working, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I got to help them 
uh, with some stuff out there. He, he'd show me, you know, I guess a few tricks and, and we built some fun stuff out there like a playhouse and I don't know, it was just, I, I kind of really got into it early. I, I enjoyed building things yep. and uh, you know, there's a real sense of accomplishment at, at the end of the day because you actually see yeah. what you did, you know, it's yep. it's right in your face. And um, so I, yeah, I enjoyed that. And once, you know, once I had to get a job after, you know, the hockey thing didn't turn out, um, you know, I came back and, and really just jumped in full tilt into, into the construction industry and uh, rode this city's, you know, yeah. booms and busts like crazy, but I, I've never not been busy. It's yeah. just seems like every time I come back into a boom, it's Everyone's right ready there, to go. yeah. So yeah. so this city's been wonderful for, for me to, you know, um, kind of achieve where I've, where I've gotten to and the success I've had in construction. Um, it's not all me, it's just, you know, the city needed it and for sure. gave me the opportunity to, yep. you know, learn my craft and we do we do great work you know and the people uh the people that are in the company working there now are i dare say better than i ever was you know like a real team I, yeah I, uh i try and stay out of their way yeah it's a good, <laughs> it's a good spot to be it is it's pretty it's pretty good i don't need to micromanage them or anything it's yep. it's neat and kale had a huge part in that i mean he's He's more so molded some of these guys than I have, and and it's just a great thing. So it's good, yeah. it, you know. Obviously, having a surrounding yourself with a good team, it's exactly like sport, right? Yep, like, totally. If you if you understand that in sport, I think you can, and as a business owner, I think you can pull that into your totally. business and away you go. Yeah. Um, did you did you always know that you wanted to like start your own company? Like construction was your thing, but did you? Yeah, you know, uh, the odd little jobs I had before I got into construction. Yeah, I had, a, I had a real hard time with, I don't want to say I had an authority complex, but maybe, maybe I did, did maybe I do, I don't know. But I, I just, I wanted to be responsible, I think, which is weird. I just always wanted to be kind of, if it escalates, it has to come to me and it yep. doesn't go beyond me. Yep. I get to make that final decision. Yep. Um, so. I don't know. I, I yeah. I, it, and that authority thing is really interesting because I'm kind of the I think about it the same way. And you know, it's not. <clears throat> you know, you re, I respect people in, in higher positions, but sometimes, you know, the minute that it's just not going your way, you know, you're kind of the hair kind of goes up. Yeah. And, and, and it's not a healthy spot to be in. So all of a yeah. sudden, the, the only choice is to do your own thing. Totally. So, I, yeah. I mean, I, I've always been a hard worker. Um, you know, I whether it's natural or I learned it from my grandpa and then some other guys along the way, I, I don't know. I think that for, even goes back to hockey. Yep. I, I should have never been on that team, but I remember the coach said, yeah, you only made the Kibelka. team. Yeah, because you were like the hardest worker out there, you know, and that was it. Yep. That was all the reporting. Yep. Works really hard. <laughs> okay. It's like all the scouting scouter reports are like, okay, well, we need one of those guys. So anyway, um, that just, you know, went over later in life to – construction where you're rewarded for working hard yeah. you know it's uh i'm not saying you're not rewarded in every profession of course you are but for me just you know the the hands-on you know working hard feeling good at the end of the day seeing you know half a house built or something yep. you know like it was yep. it was enjoyable and yep. when walls go up all of a sudden yeah, I, I remember being on sites when the walls go yeah. up and you're like wow wow it's, it's two there. days to build this thing and it is pop. it's it's gratifying and and uh you know I think that that saw me through a lot of years where I'd otherwise be getting in more trouble than yeah. I already was. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, but yeah, I I look back fondly on those years. Um, you know, framing, yep. framing houses. That that was kind of my main thing. I I got up to about five crews at one point. Wild. Almost twenty. I think it was twenty five people, and whew, that was That's a lot serious. for a guy that never went to you know mm -hmm. any kind of business school or anything like that. So yeah my poor parents you know really had to help me through mm -hmm. uh the paperwork side of stuff and they didn't sign up for that so mm -hmm. i i kind of switched gears at that point and got right out of framing and into you know the full new build stuff and um and that's been great that's yeah stonebridge crafted home has been around for 20 years crazy man. you know it's wild and uh and some really neat projects you know that have been completed on that and more yep. to come so what's the when you say that, what, what do you have one standout that you go to? <clears throat> oh, there's the, boy, there's so many. Um, 
I, you know what, one that, that really is near and dear to me is uh, actually a school um, in 2013 after the floods. And a really good friend of mine, Erin Corbett, she was the um, head of school there. It's a private school. And she called me and was like, kind of frantic, hey, can you, can you fix this place? Which to me was a huge opportunity. Where was at it? The time. This is in uh, Bonassa, actually. Oh, yeah. um, it's right on the river. It's called uh, River Valley School. Cool. And um, anyway, you know, 50,000 square foot place, came in, looked at it, basement's completely full of water. The place is just trashed. It's like, okay. <laughs> this is a project. And she's like, uh, you know, we want to be open for the school year, like in September. And I'm like, I think that it was like six or seven weeks away or so. I can't mm -hmm. remember. Uh, yeah, something like that. And so, yeah, a significant amount of work and um, did it, crushed it. They, they missed, I think they were the very first school that was affected by floods to be open in the city. So that wow. was that was a really neat thing. Feather my cap for sure, but um, it brought Kale back into the picture for me. He was actually working at an um, outfit called Marcor uh, and doing the, the finishing carpentry, carpentry stuff. But I had him in there working alongside me for a bit and it was like, holy man, stole I need, him. I need this, yeah. And. Uh, and yeah, boy, the company's benefited having him around, you know. Crazy. Yeah, he went right to the top really quick. So anyway, enough about Kale. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was I, I'd say that one, um, you know, it's not, it's not like, oh, this is the most beautiful school anyone's yep. ever seen. I mean, it, it brought it back to, you know, a little bit better than it was before. But, but just the amount of work. I mean, hundreds of guys yep. I was running every day um, and to get that done. And actually the late Ken King was super pissed off at me because uh, I was stealing a lot of guys that were working at the Saddle Dome. No way. Yeah. Just and, filling your uh, crews and filling uh, up. Oh, it was amazing. He's like, who the hell is this? Is this guy? He knew my dad pretty well. So <laughs> he's like, you tell Mike to back <laughs> off. <laughs> we're trying to get the Saddle Dome open, which they did after me. Um, but uh, yeah, it was... Anyway, that was That's a wild one. time. That was a wild time. So, you know that you know it's. it's I, I just, I've talked to a few people now about starting their own thing, and it's really interesting. Just to, you know, it's it's not it's that authority piece, or it's, you know, it's the hard working piece. Obviously, to pull off your own thing, you have to be a super hard worker. It's yeah, probably, it's kind of cliche to say it, but did you ever feel like, was there ever a doubt, or did you just say this is what I'm doing and and we're going? Yeah, there was. No, I, I, <laughs> I like, never, honest, I like, never, weird, yeah, right? I never, I never really had a doubt. I think, I think I could have done things a lot better. <laughs> I think I made, I made things a lot more difficult for myself. Yep. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, with the plans, I'd be like, I'm doing this and that's it. And here I go. And not a whole ton of, you know, uh, planning in the sense that were there other opportunities I should have been chasing down and stuff like that. Yep. I just, I just would jump in and, and go. And sometimes you hit a wall, but I'd break through the wall and that Hard was working. that. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely could have made things a lot easier on myself for sure. I don't regret anything, but, but, uh, yeah, I mean, but there's never, there's never a question of like, this is, this is going to, no. this is going to be my thing for years. You were just, you know, uh, it's going to work. Oh, great. Yeah. Great question there. I, I think, um, I, I, it came to a point, I think in well, 2017, 2016, where I was like, I was more interested in building the company than building projects, you know, yep. which, which is great. I think that's a nice transition. You know, you want to start building the people inside the companies and, and build the company from the inside out. And. And that was fun. I really, you know, and with, with Kale's help, like we really hunkered down and, and, and did that and had some great success because of it. Um, that was fun that for the whole construction thing. That was, that was the most enjoyable thing for me. And I mean, that wasn't just us sitting down and doing it. Like we, you know, I probably sat down with a lot of great business minds. I, I was fortunate enough. Um, I am fortunate enough. My, my father is, is, uh, He's a he's a 
very successful guy in what the oil patch. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so he's retired now, but uh, boy, I've leaned on him a lot, <laughs> and uh, like, so he's been so fantastic, you know. So what a great guy to, and he owned his own company for for years, and and I mean, large company, lots of people. So do you think there's any connection, like when you're growing? If- yeah, I don't Quite know. possibly. Did, like, did your dad grow? Was he always have his own thing, and you grew no, up with it? No, uh, he. I guess probably when I was, you know, early teens, I think he ended up buying the company off his former boss. Gotcha. With a, with a group of guys, but he was the president and and ended up being CEO and stuff. But in the, I think majority owner. I'm not. I'm not sure how all that worked. But but uh, but yeah, he was always the boss. So. Hmm. Um, I got to see the effort he put in as a kid and, and I mean, just up early and home late and, um, like that's got to never, never complained, you know, he just went and did it. And I know there were times there were stressful times. I mean, you know, like, like I say, the city, especially in oil, like yeah, up and up down, down, up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. Right. But just an incredible father figure. And, and yeah, I, I think I got most of that from him, the, the, the effort and just, I got to see him work through things that I didn't know the the finer points or exactly what he was doing. But I mean, there was yep. the business was on the line a lot yep. of times, and he would just get it done. And uh, I, that's kind of how I've approached things. It's like, well, with just time and effort Don't is go. everything. Yep. You know, it's whether you know i'm not the smartest guy or or don't have the greatest plan or whatever with with time and effort you're gonna find a way anyone can so and then you learn and you move on um but yeah i think i got a lot of that from my dad for sure did he sit you down ever and like you know talk to you about being a business owner or did you just pick up these things kind of passively and just he i think he could tell like i was not going to work well with like under under someone yeah what about Um, school though did you like did you suck at school and I was terrible. Yeah, okay. yeah, I didn't. Uh, I did not apply myself at all. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, it, it, my English teacher in in uh, grade twelve was like, "Hey," at the very beginning of the year, he's like, "Hey, listen, um, if if you don't come to my class all year, I won't mark you absent, and uh, you just have to take the final exam, and and that's it." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, great." Like, and he was happy. I was happy, and that was that. <laughs> I, I tried pulling that on my math teacher, but he said no. Um, but yeah, I mean, so school, unfortunately, and that's another thing, you know, you, you look back and I, I, I did not put any effort in. It was more just a social experience for yeah. me, which was great. I actually miss school, believe it or not. Um, I miss seeing all those people, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I could have done a lot better there. Um, did your dad, did he... You know, did he know that? And then, you know, did he? Do you think he thought about? Uh, he was he was disappointed. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he just quit looking at my report cards at a young age. He's like, "That's enough. You yeah, know, just just pass." <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he sat me down many a time. I, I remember there was a time he's like, "You know, Jesus, you you should just go get a job and work for someone. This is ridiculous, Mike. You know, like what are you what are you getting yourself into here?" <laughs> No, you know, and I keep going and get through it. But I mean, without his support, uh, no way. Yeah. Like there was a lot of nights where he'd sit down with me and calm me down. And cool. Going to do this and get through it and really set me up. So, and now, yeah, it's um, it's a pretty well old machine. That company, it's mm-hmm. great, and uh, I'm just fortunate, very lucky. You know, it takes. It, it's not just um, <clears throat> you know, hard work aside. Like you put in hard work and. It, hopefully it's going to go the right direction but you know having people around you seems like a common theme of successful totally companies. surround yourself with with good people and yeah and and listen and i've learned that too like i my father-in-law is an incredible businessman um very fortunate to have him in my life and and uh, i've learned a lot from him he's it's great talking to him too uh but just people in the city uh it's it's pretty neat like there was a there was a time there and I, I can't remember if it was 2016 or 2017, but I I made kind of a, a mandate where at least once a week I'd be sitting down with, you know, cool. someone and having a talk with them about, you know, kind of business philosophy or, you know, maybe even just helping me through an issue I had or, yep. or, or growing the company and everything else. And 
I got to sit down with some really neat people and, and no one ever said no, you know, it was, mm. they were like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you. And, uh, God, I must've talked to, you know, a couple dozen people in the city. that are really, you know, successful entrepreneurs and, yep. and, uh, boy, that felt good. And, you know, I hope I can be in a position yep. like that one day when, you know, some young guy comes in and wants some help and a hundred percent, you know, uh, I think we all have lessons we, that we learn that we can pass on. Right. And for sure, save some time and headache yep. for some yep. of these guys <laughs> and gals. Yeah. You know, what's really interesting. That's the, the first time you use the word entrepreneur. Oh, and, and, and I've been thinking about it lately, even having a couple of conversations, a lot of, a lot of people don't like using that word. Yeah. And, and I don't know if it's because it's uh, become kind of cliche and it's, it gets tossed Probably. around pretty easily now. Yeah. So you don't want to use it, but it's, it's, it's Sometimes it fits. Yeah. Sometimes it fits to say it. There's not really another, yeah. another term for it. Yeah. You can like, you can, you can like tiptoe around it, but at the yeah. end of the day, that's kind of, and obviously the name of the show is entrepreneurs, artists, and athletes. Yeah, so that's why, you you, that's why you're here. So, um, so that, you know, you did the construction for, were you still doing construction obviously? Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you take like a, a left hook and this is where you and I kind of reconnected again. Cause honestly, like we hadn't seen each other in who knows, 15 yeah, years, what a, a long amount of time since the mercury closed. And so all of a sudden on social, I'm just kind of figuring out that you're doing something. Yeah. So yeah. Explain how this happened. Cause this is, this, yeah. and, and for whatever reason, and I've told you this last time we talked, but the minute I realized what you're up to, I was super excited for some reason. And you know, the craft, the craft brewery scene is obviously massive in Calgary. And you know, I'm not a, I'm not a beer snob by any stretch. I don't go to all these different, but the minute I realized it was you doing it kind of in my neighborhood, I like, I got excited for That's some awesome. reason. I was this, I don't, I don't know if I was, well, a, because I could ride my bike down the hill to a brewery, which really sounds interesting yeah. to me and B it was, it was just you and for whatever. And it was just, I was jazzed That's to figure awesome. out it was you. So anyways, oh, thanks Jeff. Tell, yeah. uh, yeah, explain how the hell this one happened. Yeah. So, um, 2018 near the, near the end of 2018, um, you know, I was, I don't want to say button heads, but I could tell I was definitely getting in the way of some of the guys, you know, um, uh, well, this is how I do it. This is that. And yep. well, but you've made a mandate, Mike, that this is how it's supposed to be done. I'm like, oops. You know, like, <laughs> Oh yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. <laughs> I don't listen to that. I do it my way. Anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> so I, I kind of had to, you know, sit back and go, geez, I'm not, I don't know if I'm helping here anymore in, in that sense. Like I, I don't want to be micromanaging these guys and they're paid way too much money for me to be doing that too. It's like, they got to own this. So, so I started like going, Holy man, what am I going to do? I like, I, you know, I thought about it for months. Like how can I fit in? I mean, obviously I'm still, you know, doing the sales stuff and that's going to be with me the rest of my life. And that's fine. I, I don't mind. I love getting this work, you know, or, or opening yep. the door for the guys to get the work is really what it, what it ends up being. But, um, yeah, I, I, I go, man, I got to do something else. And I started looking at so many different things. Um, like random things. That well, you know, good buddy of mine, uh, <clears throat> started a backpack company that you may know of. And, and anyway, manufacturing seemed to be paying off pretty good for him. And, <laughs> I'm like, so he, and he's always for years, he's been trying to get me to get into some kind of manufacturing thing. He's like, Oh, you should do kitchens. You should do something. I don't know. Anyway, I looked at a bunch of stuff. None of it really interested me, but, um, yeah, I, I found myself, you know, thinking about a lot of this stuff sometimes in these local breweries. Mm. And I just remember it happened just so naturally. I was sitting there and I don't know which one it was at. Um, like where, like Inglewood or? or yeah, and it was in Inglewood. Okay. It might've been all beautiful. Yeah. Um, what a great space that is. So I, I think I'm going to say it happened there. Um, and I was just looking around and I'm like, look at these assholes. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a, like they're making beer. What the hell's wrong with this? Like this is, this is amazing. And I'm just watching now, like, whoa, like this is, this is cool. And how friendly, like I walk over, I'm like, Hey, how you doing? You know, mind if I ask you some questions? They're like, no, man, totally shoot. And, and you know, from the brewmasters, the people working in there to the actual owners and stuff, like 
just good, friendly people. What a friendly industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, construction industry is not so friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you throw 10 or 12 construction guys that own yep. companies in a room together and maybe two or three leave. Yep, quickly. Right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I'm saying leave with their lives, you know? Like, it's like, <laughs> God, it's such a cutthroat, just, yeah, not a friendly industry by any stretch. And I don't mind saying that. I've been in it long enough in this town I can say that. Um, it's really weird, a lot of finger-pointing nonsense. Whereas uh, this, it's it's funny, the... the the more of these um, owners of these breweries that we've been talking to over the last few years, like you just, everybody wants to help. It's, mm. it's crazy. It's not like the, the competition there is like a, it's a healthy one. It's and and they want to see you succeed. Mm. And I understand it now. Like it actually helps the whole industry, the craft industry. If more of us succeed, then, you know, we kind of take that market share away from the big boys, right? Well, and, so and you can see it. You can see it even if you're not in the space. If you'd be blind if you didn't figure out when you go to the the, the beer store now, because yeah. the shelves there's like tons. It's random it's cans. It's daunting. Like every day, you're like, well, this is new, right? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, anyway, so yeah, I was sitting in there and I'm like, holy man, this who were you with? Do you remember? This is what I want to do. Yeah, I was with Kale, of course. Okay, but I didn't say. <laughs> there's a common theme here, by the way. To him. I didn't say anything to him, and then. Uh, I just started doing a bunch of research myself and, and trying to see if this was going to be viable. And, and, you know, I kind of got as far as I wanted to. And then I'm like, Kate, okay, mindset, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm just doing it. You know, here we go. So I brought Kale in my office and was like, hey, um, I want to talk to you about something. And I'd like you to be my, my partner, you know. And, and uh, he literally, like, the very next sentence was like, yeah, man you know like just awesome. that fast and it was like oh good you know and and i mean he's i just know him inside out he knows me inside out we we really kind of fill each other's gaps in yep. so to speak so you know immediately i think within two days kale had the whole business plan together and awesome. i'm like whoa man like, <laughs> what is this i'm like reading our business plan i'm like this isn't what <laughs> you know he was so in and that's just him he's he he got yeah he got our business plan together and we we worked on it a little bit together after that but he, he nailed it and uh and yeah so from late 2018 on we've been really working at this thing uh to make it a reality and and about a year ago, um, got the building, and um, so where and is been it? Working tell, on it ever it, since. Explain where it is, and just say the name again. So yeah, so can. it's Tail Gunner Brewing Company is the outfit, and uh, I'll get into the name after. But the building is uh, in Sun Alta um, on Tenth Avenue, and really a neat spot really um, cool. for anybody over there you know first glance you're like where the hell am i i'm just mm -hmm. trying to get the crow child or i'm going through here yeah but there is so much potential there it's just nuts and not to mention just north of us is the new west village development that has been approved by the city um obviously with covid and the, the economy the way it is i don't i don't know who's going to take a stab at it first but yeah. it's there that's the plan it's it's stunning it's going to bring a lot of people into that area yeah really neat retail district it'll be totally different than east village um not knocking down east village it's just that that's it's different vibe. The vibe will be yep. totally different and uh anyway so yeah when when kale and i were looking for a space um you know, we looked all over the place. We knew we wanted to be, you know, close to downtown or downtown if we could. Um, just feels under under service, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you want to stay away from the the suburbs? go to places? No, like the the oh, established kind of beer yeah, spots. Yeah, you know, I, I no offense to the Barley Belt. I just didn't I didn't want to be in a industrial yep. area with zero walking traffic. Yep. You know, like you're not walking around over there and. Um, they've done an amazing job. Yeah, it's, it's, All those guys are killing it. Yep. Like, like good for them. And uh, and to do it over there, I get why. Like the 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 rent was cheap, or the lease, or yep. and and the space was perfect because really you need all that space to be doing this. Um, obviously, Kale and I, with our background in construction, we see things a little differently than you know other guys starting a brewery. Yep. Um, we can make anything work and. Yep. So we weren't looking for a warehouse. We weren't looking for something like that. Uh, 
we wanted location first. So we, we looked everywhere and this building came up and, and um, by the time we kind of caught on to it, it was sold. And we're like, oh, no damn way. It. Anyway, what year was this? This was in, <clears throat> this would have been 2019. Okay. And uh, anyway, um, we're like, shoot, okay, we'll keep looking. And we're looking all over the place. And, and then randomly I was actually on a plane uh, flying to Maui for holidays and I had, I had Wi-Fi, so I was, I was uh, my family, you know, Shannon and the kids uh, are on there, but I'm on my computer and just checking up on buildings and stuff. And then that one came back up. No way. It just had come back up. And I guess the guy that got it couldn't get the money together. And, and so it was back on the market, like literally that morning. I'm like, holy man. So I, you know, email my, uh, real estate agent and have him go over and have a look and kale was in town so kale went over and had a look and he's like man it's perfect and uh so before i got off the plane believe it or not <laughs> that the deal was done and awesome. and accepted awesome and um and then i had to tell shannon <laughs> so, so, yeah. so the start of your vacation oh yeah oh she by was, the way she's not pleased um <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I had to do this. I don't know how that, yeah. She didn't talk to me for a bit there, but then she got behind it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, really, really exciting. And, uh, you know, got back and really have been working on it ever since. Um, and Kale and I have built everything in there, like ourselves mm. with our own hands, everything. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty neat to see how far it's come. And, and at this point right now, we're about a week and a half away from actually brewing out of there. So cool. that's, that's a big game changer for us. Yeah. So, so I was lucky enough, um, I don't know, probably two or three months ago, I showed up and had a little tour of the place and, and it's definitely not, it's unlike any, uh, craft spot that I've been, you know, I'm not a craft like I said, not a craft dude, but I've been to a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. This is way different. So yeah, just, just explain what the, what your, what the idea is. Cause you're not just, you know, you're not in a warehouse. You don't have four tanks. You're doing something different. Yeah. So, uh, it goes right, right back in line with, the, with our branding. So the, the brand tail gunner, um, it's actually named after my grandfather who was a tail gunner in a Lancaster in World War II. Uh, he was the only guy that survived on his crew on their fifth mission. They got shot down over Holland. Anyway, really neat story. Real survivor. Um, was a POW for almost three years, tortured and starved and all Wild. that stuff. Yeah, Nazis weren't very friendly people. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> came back to Canada, you know, started a family. Like I said, got into, into construction. And uh, just his whole being kind of really embodied that greatest generation spirit, you know, just like came from nothing, had nothing, made something, you yep. know, and, and, and did it just for his family and, uh, just a really special, special guy. But that, I think that whole generation just with the hardships, um, you know, before and after the war, uh, you know, wow. Uh, it's different. It, yeah. Just hardworking yeah. community, you yeah. know, people. And, uh, pretty special so so we we built that brand when did, and how did that how did you how did you land on that because obviously you know you're coming up with the name is important yeah is it, was it you like lying there one day or no was it you? i well i i have a holding company actually that does the commercial real estate that i have and and uh i named it tail gunner holding company oh, after, cool. after my grandpa but that was as far as i went with it awesome. well it was pretty neat when we we're coming up with names kale was actually the one because he knows the holding company and everything and he's like man it's gotta be tail gunner awesome and we can and he knew the story of my grandfather yep. and everything and and i'm like oh man wow Lights okay are on. yeah let's do this yep. so so what a great core story and it's not just about my grandfather it's that whole kind of greatest generation uh thing which is we think is a timeless kind of deal yeah and, and and it speaks to everyone i mean you know your grandparents in some way shape or form yep. were involved and and even if people weren't in the war they were they were you know working in the fields making ration kits for yep. you know everybody in in the war yep. effort and stuff so like the whole world was truly affected my grandpa that, during that period of time was and i don't know if he was a tail gunner but he was in the war there's pictures of him in on the plane kind of below in those bubbles with the gun oh yeah so whatever that is called that's what the, mid, the, the mid turret the so mid lower gunner is what he would be crazy and then the ones on top of the mid upper gunner um 
That's wild. Yep. Yeah, dangerous yep. spots. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think their survival rate was 10%. Crazy. You know, like just off the get-go. Like imagine knowing that you're a 20 no. year old kid. No. Anyway, they did it. Um, really neat, really neat story, neat people. So we, we wanted to, you know, continue that you know, our branding right into the space itself. And, and, um, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, use kind of that timeless material. Like, so we've got, we've actually got hardwood that's going in that's from the forties. Cool. We've got light fixtures that are from the forties. We've got, uh, you know, all that stuff that we're doing in there as much of it as we can to, to make it look and feel and be authentic. Yeah. That's everything. And, uh, and, you know, with our background and, and the stuff that we've done, we you can do we're it. doing that. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty cool. So so it's gonna have a real timeless feel, which I think is really important too. You see a lot of these places, um, you know It's the afterthought. Well it's they're beautiful. Yeah, like, they're great. You, you go into these places, it's mm. awesome, but they, they almost have like a shelf life of like five years. Yeah. And then they gotta be refreshed or updated. Yeah. We don't wanna do that. You know, we want to we want a timeless place. Yeah. That is timeless materials, like quality materials that aren't, mm -hmm. you know, oh, geez, this needs to be painted again yep. or ripped out. Well, who cares? It's only going to be five years and we'll redo it anyway. We're not, this is for the long haul. So we're spending a lot of money on material. We're doing it right. And it's it's going to feel really, really good in there. And then beyond that, you know, we want we want it to feel like, you know, it's it's a real place for the community to come and and talk. We're not going to have 50 TVs all over the place. Like this is a place where we want people to sit down have a conversation, you know, yeah. and and enjoy it and feel comfortable in there and feel like it's theirs. And yeah. uh so so that's where we're where we're shooting for that and and I feel like it's it's going to happen. You know, we're going to have we're going to have live music in there, you know, once a week at least or see what what the people yeah. want. Yeah. Um so we're building things that we can pull out and and it's modular and we can throw a stage in, you know, and cool. people are like where the hell did that come from? Yeah. You know, it's like boom. So we're doing stuff like that where we really want to engage people in, um, you know, the whole beer thing. I'm fascinated with it. Um, Is that a new fascination? Like, Yeah, you know what? I mean, I've always loved beer. When I was younger, like probably everybody else, I, I, I don't know if it was Costco or someone, actually it was before Costco, <laughs> dating myself, but whatever. <laughs> Some, I don't know what, like real Canadian superstore had like these, beer kits that oh, you yeah. could make your own beer okay. and uh and so i did that when i was like 18 or something 17 and uh well i guess it would have been 18 let's say <laughs> legal drinking age but uh it was funny yeah. that i did it and my mom actually helped me she actually read the instructions and did it and the, and the beer turned out really good no way. my buddies were all like oh this is amazing <laughs> and so i kind of had that it felt really good, right? Yeah. And then the second batch I did myself and it was like, you had to spit it out, it was terrible. And yeah. I just force everyone to drink it anyway. <laughs> I'm like, you're drinking this. It, after the third bottle, it's okay. I can't picture that. Oh my that. God, it was terrible. <laughs> and uh, but and then that was it, that was my little stand at brewing. But but um, but I've always loved beer and you, you know, everybody has their beer and you know, for a while it was coconut and then it was like, Moosehead, but then, we didn't grow up I don't with even know what else. Many options. We though, didn't. Right? We like had Moosehead was like you were off the yeah, off the grid, like off the board on that one. And then it was, uh, oh man, what was it later? You remember Red Dog? Red Dog, sure, yeah. There was there was some <laughs> awful stuff. Triple X. Gold. What was the gold? Well, there's gold a, cat. Cool. No. There's Olympia. I remember Olympia. Wild Cat. Wild Cat. That was terrible. That was, yeah, that but was But it was terrible. cheap. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you could buy like twenty four for nothing. <laughs> Drink some Wildcat. Oh my <laughs> God, that was terrible. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I've always loved beer, even even if it was terrible, as you can tell. Yeah, find a way. But um, this whole craft thing, yeah, it's just been it's been really neat. Just being a spectator before and someone that just you know comes in and buys it and tries to understand it. I I mean, I could just tell it was light years better than yep. what I was drinking. And and you start learning. Well, it's fresh. It's like fresh. What? What does that mean? You know, like doesn't you know a Corona could sit in a shelf for seven years yep. like in the sun and it'll taste exactly the same. <laughs> you know, but this stuff it's got a shelf life and uh, and you know it's incredible like the the difference in in taste and everything. Yep. So yeah, I I mean I was late to the game for sure, but um, 
but even that, like you had, but I got into it, you know, I was like, wow, like once I'm into it, I'm into it. And, and, uh, it just, yeah, it just became something that, you know, I kind of obsessed over and wanted to do. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, here we are, like, it's, it's pretty amazing. We've got, you know, these beers on the table right here. And it, yeah. actually that's my grandpa right there, you know, crazy. That's our, that's our main beer. And, uh, it's, it's wild, you know, but it, we're so busy. You can't really stop and, yep. you know, think like, wow, this is neat. We got here. And yep. it, it, it's not over yet. It's not even close. So we got, we got a long way to go. Um, but, so far it's it's just been amazing and and our brewmaster like couldn't be happier we're so fortunate to have blake and what a wonderful guy that whole alignment thing you know like that we've seen in construction building the construction companies like that's so key i think anyone you're working with or works with you or for you or whatever you've got to have that alignment yeah or it's not going to work you know it's it's just not so in my experience and uh you know that was a real key thing when we went out to to find blake um he was our number one target awesome. and we knew right when we first met him too it was like oh man this is a good guy this and is it. uh he said no the very first time but two days later we got him into the brewery and walked him around and awesome you could see what what you guys like, saw he was like okay and you know it, it gave him a chance to kind of ask us some questions too and yeah you could just see that alignment forming and and yeah and so far it's been just incredible so you've been brewing so so the the brewery isn't open to the public but your your cans are out in the retail space right now yeah so we've we've unfortunately had to uh because of covid uh we just couldn't get things set up you know the banks were yep. well we had some great deals in place uh they fell apart and it was it's been a it's been a struggle to get to where we are, but we are, we made it, we're here. Yep. And uh, we, we didn't want to, I guess we didn't want to wait. We wanted to get, we had Blake, we wanted to get our beer to market. We wanted some market presence. Yep. And uh, we talked to him about it and we're like, you know, should we go use another facility? And I mean, he's still, it's still his recipe. He's yep. monitoring them. Yep. Um, but that's the thing we're that's using other the, people's equipment kind which of that thing. happens all oh over the God. place now that i see it i, I you know, i'm not going to throw anyone under the bus <clears> but yeah you'd be it's surprised yeah you'd be surprised at how many other breweries are doing that but and that's just because of their capacity for sure uh we uh we fortunately i think we'll be and you know i hope i'm not saying the wrong thing here but we will be like the fifth biggest brewery in the city wild um with the capacity that we have so we're not going to have that problem once we're actually brewing. It's really exciting. Yep. Um, but uh, where I was going with that, yeah, Blake had to, you know, we, we figured out we wanted to use these guys field and forge up in Innisfil because um, their water profile and, and cool. equipment and stuff. And Blake went up there and, yeah, hit it out of the park with our first one, this uh, authentic Czech Pilsner. And as far as I know, we're the only authentic Czech Pilsner in Alberta. It's um, good, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not you. biased. It's actually, it's, like, it's good. <laughs> he worked, he worked really hard on that. And, and that's part of that alignment thing. We're, we're all about loggers and, uh, not, not seeing we're not doing IPAs. We've, we've done a couple, um, that are huge successes, but we, we just love loggers, you know, mm -hmm. like they're, they're our favorite. They're and Blake Blake's loves them favorite. too. Yeah. And, and that's more of an old school mm -hmm. um, method. It really is. It's the first. So, so to have Blake, who's been taught by some real heavy hitters out in uh, Toronto that do it that, that kind of old world way. Yep. Um, he's just naturally does that stuff cool. so it's it's really really exciting and and we are we're going to have a very robust logger program which is way outside the box of anyone else everyone else is doing ipas and ales and uh yep. i'm not saying they're not doing loggers yep. yep they are it's just we're we're focusing on that so i'm i'm really really excited to see where that goes cool um but yeah we've got the right equipment we've got the right guy the location is incredible and the room, they're like, how you, how you, um, what are you calling it? Like what, like the front of the room? What do you? Yeah, I, great question. Is there, I mean, is there? It's anything? like a, is it, is it a beer hall? Is it a brew pub? Is it a mm. brew hall? I, I, you know, I don't know. Just a, it's a gathering space. Yeah, it's going to be mean, a cool we spot. To, we just want it to be what it hopefully becomes, and that's a place for the community 
and being like literally in Sun Alta yeah, it's really cool. is incredible. And and we've got our old Mayor Bron Kanye is building two towers right beside us, like 30 feet from us mm -hmm. um, on the same side of the street. And uh, these are two 26 story residential towers that I'm sure we're going to know a couple of people that, that populate them, you know, so it's, <laughs> it's exciting. There's, there's a lot of stuff going up in the area. I think last count we did, there's over 70,000 people within walking distance. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's nuts of, of legal drinking age. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're, we're, we're kind of the only game in town over there right yep. now. Uh, I would hope that it's a success and, and that, that street starts getting a little notoriety yep. um, based on us being kind of pioneers. And, you know, we, we want to be pillars by the end of it, you know, pillars of the see community. It. But there, it's a great street. It it's is. a great it's track. It's built in character. I think there's, you know, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm really hoping is, is you know, some restaurants start taking a chance over there and doing some stuff. And, yep. and more importantly, hopefully some more breweries. Yeah. Like if we can get our own little corner going yep. on over there with, yeah. You know, some some other breweries that'd be so exciting. Um, and if it's just us, we'll make it work. You know, For sure. um, I I just I do hope to see some others pop up. I think it'd be fantastic. You, you know, it, I just think you know, just driving up and down that street, it's it's different than a lot of streets. Yeah. It's, it's kind of random. It's got some newer buildings, but everything's kind of low rise. Right on the edge of a community. Yeah, yeah it's it's it is different. Totally, yep. there's a different vibe to it for sure. And that's why it fits your building. Just it. You know, I'm sure it's going to be awesome because you guys are builders. So it's going to be, it's just, it's, it's going to look really cool yeah. on that street. And I think the street presence and however you do the front, totally, whatever happens on the front is going to yeah. be really, really cool. Yeah, we'll cool. have a hell of a patio. It, it faces south. So we'll have sun all day long. Yep. Um, a garage door, are you going to do? Yeah, we're going to do some three, sort of three big glass garage doors that open up. Um, cool. So yeah, in the summertime, it'll be, it'll be really neat because it'll feel like, you know, we've yeah. just added that much more to yeah. it. but. Yeah, it sits racks. about 200 it sits about 200 people so it's it's not small by any means yep um we need COVID to start behaving yeah or people to start behaving what both, one both. <laughs> but uh so we'll see what happens with with opening i mean we could be ready and first day of spring like cool. no problem uh but you know do we really want to build that out and yeah. have it set so it's it's kind of tricky the big thing is in a week and a half like i said we're going to be brewing out of our own facility so awesome that really changes the uh the margin so to speak yep. um and turns it into you know a real viable business cool and uh so we're, we're excited for that to happen blake's been very patient poor mm -hmm. guy he hasn't brewed for like a year so it's gonna be really cool i can't imagine what you're gonna feel like when you turn those things on for yeah. the first time and well, it I, comes I, think out. I'll, I think I'll have my head down. I'm, I'm, I go into Mike the janitor mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, uh, I don't get much time to sit around doing anything. I'm kind of a catch all. Um, on the on the labor side, Kale's Kale's really dialed in on everything else, uh, and I, I I leave him to it. And actually, his wife is involved as well, cool. Tanya. She's she's just been a incredible workhorse, and and my wife as you know, is doing the Instagram and, and I yep. couldn't be happier. You know, it's, it's really neat. I didn't foresee that. Like when I said, Kale is my partner. I, I yeah. didn't think we'd have our wives, um, jumping in involved, but it, it it's, it's kind of the right thing. It, it, it even goes with the branding. I was you know? just going to say it's, it goes exactly it's natural. It. So, yeah. um, well, we, yeah, well, we didn't want it to be like a mom and pop thing. It, it, it's kind of Here we're we doing are. whatever we have to do. I mean, <laughs> totally. As you know, it's been tough getting through uh, this pandemic and, and starting a new business, and it has been For equally sure. as tough. Yep. But but so far, our beer is flying. You know, awesome, we've, we've hit some really neat uh, retailers, and, and they've, you know, once they've tasted the beer and understand the story, and, and Blake has some notoriety, uh, it's, it's it's been on. amazing. Like, we're, we're all over Alberta now, and we're just growing so crazy yeah man. it's fun so crazy um i think you and i could talk about the brewery and because i can you come alive when you talk about the, about the brewery oh, that's I, nice I, don't know if, I don't know if you know it no. but it, it's like it you everything changes in you your body oh, wow. language everything changes so i think what that speaks to is that it's a, a true passion and you're, and you're super pumped about it i am and um yeah i'll obviously i'll include the links in everywhere where, where this gets posted um 
the way I like to put a bow on these chats is, you know, I say when I say the word Calgary, where does your head go? It's, oh, it's, it's it, great. It's an interesting question. Um, for me, it's the only scripted question in these things. And obviously it's in the name of the show. So I like to kind of just end end the show with this to, and okay. just to see. And I want to see eventually when I do more of these, there's going to be a common theme, I think, how people answer it. So, yeah, I'm interested where your head goes when okay. I say Calgary. When you, Yeah, that's I love that. Um, I'd say two things. Uh, you know, resilient people with a community spirit. Awesome. I think that's Calgary to me. It always has been to me. And uh, it's just hardworking people that want to help each other. And you see it over and over. I, I see it in Calgary. I always have. And I've done a lot of work in other cities, significant amount of work in other cities. And that vibe is not there. You yeah. know, um, this is this is a great place. It's a great place to be an entrepreneur. And I think that's why this place spits out so many, you know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, there's a real spirit there that maybe is that entrepreneur spirit, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. but yeah, to me, it's those two things. It's, it's, uh, yeah, just good, solid people that I'm proud to, you know, say I'm a part of, you know, it's cool, man. And you know, you say that and, and right away, this, well, this first time I've thought about this, but that's exactly why this show can exist. You know, I, I know people that are, you know, resilient, hardworking, doing cool things. So that's the, it's the only reason this thing actually exists when awesome. I say it out loud yeah. now, which yeah, it's, it's a common theme. I'm going to have, I'm going to keep a tally of how people answer this, but so far it's all stacked up in, uh, between like people and community. So, so cool. It's really cool. That is, um, dude, I want to thank you. No, thank you. Like I said, man, like I seriously, we haven't seen each other in 15 plus years. And the minute, you know, the minute we get to hang out, it's just like, I know it, whatever. Okay. Right man, like, Didn't pass. Yeah. The only difference is you're not spinning. Yeah, exactly. I'm not <laughs> and going, hold on. I got to do something. Mike. <laughs> I got to work. I got to work. For this. Okay. Yeah. Back to your, back to your crazy story. Thanks. But yeah, man. Super cool. Um, the can, brewer, we can we crack these? Yeah, we can crack these. Let's crack and have a cheers. Yeah. It's a good idea. Thanks, man. Cheers, buddy. Good seeing you. Appreciate it. Um, the beer is really good. And isn't it though? Yeah. So I'll, I'll link up the website and um, you'll be, you'll know, you'll be able to find out where it is in the retail spot. Um, the minute this place opens, uh, I can't wait. And I, like, I, I really, I, when you started this whole conversation, how excited I, I don't know why it's not my business. I like, but something, something in me was like, damn, this is going to be really cool. Oh, it's so great. To so hear. I don't know, man. I, I know you're going to kill it. The thanks, room's Joe. amazing. The beer's great. And uh, thanks again for doing this. Thank you. Amen. Hey,